half of the desert villages behind Harmons was, uh, the northeast corner of Bellis Hole was, and Snow Canyon Estates by the high school, all open space at one point. Um, so just so you know, this is- We do make changes. We have made changes. Washington has been altered too for Harmons. Wait, so the, the, wash, the wash north of here has been yeah. altered too for Harmons. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the, the wash behind Harmons was altered completely, the, the flow. So, so this is not unheard of, but anyway, I didn't want to, I don't necessarily have a point or a problem, but I was just wanting to see if this is something that the city has moved on, being the general plan and having sat at this desk for this point, <clears throat> I've noticed that the general plan is general, meaning it is about what we would like to see happen. It's not a commandment. It's a like, this is what we would like to see happen. So anyway, just want to make sure. So basically it's a should, not a shall. Exactly. Exactly. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jim. I read that they, they list stuff as open space that's clear out away until with a possible, well, this will probably be rezoned later or redesignated later. But stuff that's out in the rabbit brush or out in the south, right. it's kind of what they do when they set yes. open a general that is correct, but we know there's a history in this particular area with the washes and the floodplain and the soils um, and the clay. Uh, and that's why we would like to see a soils report. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we just okay. don't know what the land can take, you know, what could potentially be there. You know, mm -hmm. R110 lots at some point makes sense. Uh, lower density makes sense, but we just don't know. It's really you know, putting the cart in front of the horse. That's on, on what would be a truly available. Yes. It would, it would make just, sense on what land is truly available for. Yes. We just don't know. Because the soil's in this case. case. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good, good cop questions. All right. Uh, James, you're back. We lost you for just a moment. Did you want to finalize your point? No, I, that was all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Forrest Gump. Good reference. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bates, anything to add before we? No, I think we've covered the issue. Deliberate on this? No. We're good. Okay. The next item on the docket here would be number five, a recommendation to city council on this. Um, so, what say you? Um, I'll take a stab at it. I, in my opinion, I say no. I, I just don't agree with it. I don't think it's the right use for the land, and I agree with what the people are saying too. And you know, I, I try to err in the behalf of property owners because I think property owners have a right to do what they want to do with their land and developing it and make money. That's how I've made part of my living too. But I think that if we're looking at this for the true reasons, it's preservation of sensitive lands and habitats, and it. I just, I don't feel like it's the right thing for the space in the right location. Okay. So you're, you, you, I'd say deny it. Okay. Counterpoint, anyone? I agree with him fully that, you know, his is more on the personal land use, but I have a hard time when the city staff that at the end of the day has all of the liability when they approve stuff and they are, obviously not for it because of some of the liability they probably had in the past with expansive soils and situations it, it's hard for me to even consider <laughs> it's, a, it's yeah. a tough one expansive soils is not one that bothers me just because most of us wouldn't have houses or roads to get to if we didn't build on play it's sooner or later true so anyway but it would be but, helpful to have the soils removed. it would definitely be helpful to have the soils removed. Mm. um my my reason against it is just i i just can't see this any, any benefit to the community trying to cross the wash for eight more units like that it just seems like a lot of liability a lot of expense that doesn't really work i i'm i would say we, we would have denied the whole thing because i don't believe in kind of trying to piecemeal it at a, at a meeting you should recommend denial or approval of what's being presented and not try to cut it up but the Northwest, that might make sense for some development in the future because that wash got relocated with Harmons. It's not there anymore. So, but that's, I think we take it all or none. And I would say 
none at this point with what they've presented. Okay. All right. Would anybody like to make a recommendation then? I can recommend that we deny the proposed general plan amendment for the property that we've discussed on approximately 2900 Pioneer Parkway. I can second that according to the stipulations listed one through six by the staff. Chair, do we need to go down to general business to send that recommendation, the motion or recommendation oh. to the council? I thought we did. You did. You and did. Moved to number I'm one. sorry, I missed that. I, I apologize. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You taught me pretty well, Jim. Okay, you did good. I'm, I, okay. I apologize. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got a first from Curtis and a second from Mark. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's, a, it's a motion to deny. To deny. It's a motion. In denial. Yes. Not, we're not denying it. Right. right. Recommend denial. Yes. Right. We are a recommending body. Yes. And then it'll go to the uh, city council. Yes. And because we have a large group here tonight, uh, tentatively, the date we're looking at is uh, January 11th. Um, that would be the, the planning commission, the city council meeting where they'd consider this petition. And the city council elected officials are the legislative body, so they'll make the decision. <laughs> So more to come on that, but that's the date. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to general business. Uh, number two, then, looks like. Uh, the partial plat amendment for the hills. I think the public meeting B up on 4B is. I closed the public meeting. In regards to. Thank oh, you. is that a public hearing yeah. too? No, just meetings. Two public, public meetings. Public meeting. Yeah, this one's okay. a, this one's a public meeting, being that it's a partial plat amendment. It's not a public hearing like the last okay. one was. Uh there's some changes in state code. I'll go through them in just a second. But okay. uh we're just to be clear and transparent, we're in compliance with new state code that's been in effect this year <laughs> since May of this year. Um, so let me pull the map up itself just so you can get an idea of what's going on uh with this proposal. Um, as you can see right here, this is the lot. Um, so the applicant, uh, Brett Boyce is representing the applicant. He's with Split Rock Builders and Jason Smith uh, is a civil engineer. He's involved in this as well. He's with Rosenberg Engineering. Uh, they're proposing to amend the Hills of Santa Clara phase three. Currently the subdivision includes 26 lots. The applicant's proposing to amend uh, these three lots, 303, 304, and 305, into one large lot. And that new large lot would be approximately 89,298 square feet or 2.05 acres. So a good sized lot that's being proposed here. Um, so as you know, this property is located on the southwest end of the city uh, at 3930 Hillside Way. And we've got major cross streets in the vicinity, including Boomer's Loop and Clary Hills Drive. We looked at the address plat and we went with the middle address because there's three lots here, 303, 304, 305. So this address, 3930, would be the address for the property. Okay. Um, I want to let the Planning Commission know that with working with the engineer and Brett Boyce with Split Rock, this item was taken to our Hillside Review Board. Um, and that was done on November 22nd, 2022, just a couple of days before Thanksgiving. Uh, several items related to construction of the proposed residence were discussed. The Hillside Review Board did make a motion to forward a positive recommendation to the Planning Commission and City Council for the Hills at Santa Clara Phase 3, <clears throat> Lots 303 through 305 amended or partial plat amendment uh, to allow for the construction of a proposed residence uh, and our Hillside Review Board is made up of uh, a lot of professionals with engineering background. Uh, Logan Blake, who's a PE, who's on our planning commission, is on the Hillside Review Board. Um, we have uh, quite a few uh, that have expertise in soils, um, one of which is Wayne Rogers with uh, AGEC, who is very well known in this area. And then we have... Um, we have David Black, who's also in, has that type of expertise. And then uh, we have Jerry Admondson, who's also a professional engineer, a traffic engineer that sits on that committee with a number of others. But they're all city residents. They took the time out of their day to come to this meeting and discuss this uh, for over an hour. 
we did have five criteria. Uh, first, that the design drawings be updated to include the sub-basement profiles, that the area between the two-tiered wall and the newly proposed third wall be mitigated for disturbance, Third, that the geotechnical engineer look at a temporary excavation stability, uh, look at temporary excavation stability, particularly along the upper roadway and the basement area coming into the new proposed residence. Fourth, that the geotechnical investigation be updated to verify that there are no expansive materials within the required separation distance between the lower basement level. And fifth, that the backyard drainage be collected and discharged to an appropriate location on the lower street. Alternatively, the drainage could be pumped to the upper street. So each of these items were reviewed, uh, will be reviewed by city staff for compliance uh, at the time of uh, any building permit submittal. As I indicate, Logan's on our review board and he had a question about some of the drawings. So let me go to those. Uh, Logan, did you see what you were looking for in the yeah, middle? Yes, yeah, so it like they addressed it. They is it this drawing the, or is it another drawing? No, it's that one in the top left corner. Okay. They, they show the grade of the sub basement. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's what I was requesting. And so right now, the current no build line is right here where that retaining wall is in the area. And they're proposing to take it out to this area. And during our hillside review meeting, we got a history of the area from Dave Black, and, as well as Wayne Rogers and others that talked about this soil or this hillside being previously disturbed in the past. Uh, this is not pristine in this area. It's been graded in the past. And that was part of the reason for allowing for this increased footprint that you can see on this plat. If we go to the plat they're proposing, mm -hmm. back down here, you can see that large area. So right now the wall kind of runs through this area and they're gonna be bringing it out, out in this area, creating this larger uh, building envelope area. And I'll go uh, to the map so you can see that. Um, if I scroll down, See that, that's that wall area in here and they'll be bringing it out to this area here that you see in red. Um, and then you can see a slope map that was done uh, some time ago. And the engineer, Jason Smith is here with Rosenberg. He could speak to this slope map, but you can see that, um, you know, it's not a continuous slope. Like you see where my cursor is, is over here be behind these lots. It's more uh, a continuous slope. This is just kind of broken up, and I believe it's been cut into, and it's not pristine. Uh, it's not at that point anymore. Um, so wanted to discuss that, and it looks like Logan was able to see what he's looking for. Uh, we did have our department's review. Prior to that, we did, um, as per state code, um, there are specific requirements, and I discussed this with Matt Entz because the applicant had some questions. Utah Code Section 109A608 includes requirements for subdivision amendments. And so it's a public meeting, not a public hearing. However, we have to post the property 10 days ahead of time. So a, pro a property notice was put on the lot that, with a narrative that explains what's being proposed. And then we have to send a notice out to all property owners within, within the affected plat. So in this case, it's phase three of the hills at Santa Clara. So those notices were sent out. So we meet the state code requirements. Um, the building department, Cody Mitchell, has reviewed it. Um, geotechnical reports and other information will be provided, and he'll be key in the review of this on those five criteria that were requested by the Hillside Review Committee, if this is allowed to proceed. Uh, the power department, uh, you know, PUEs, which they show on the lot, runs along the front property line. Public Works, the PUEs as well, as, and then you have to do a Mylar. This is a partial plat amendment but they will go through the process of uh, recording a Mylar, uh, which would be the new sheet that you see here. And you can see the signature block. So the partial plat amendment is just these three properties, just over two acres in size. So planning staff's recommending that the planning commission recommends approval of the partial plat amendment for lots 303, 304, and 305 of the Hills at Santa Clara, phase three to the city council subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Uh, this is similar to other conditions we've seen. However, I did add five that the applicant be required to comply with all recommendations made by the Hillside Review Board on November 22nd of 2022. So that's an extra here. Um, I can scroll down. I don't know if Planning Commission members have had a chance to take a look at the proposed home. Uh, it is a large home um, on the side and you can see um, 
here. Uh, it is, you know, a, a single level home that kind of cuts across all three properties. I can let the applicant or the engineer speak to that if you have questions about the size of the home. Um, but I do have the drawings and they were included in your packet. Uh, you know, we, we've got a garage space. I believe there's an IADU on the other side, you know, an internal accessory dwelling unit, which is allowed with a two car garage for guests. But the applicant intends to use this as his residence or the family, his family's residence. So that's what I have on this one, um, Chair Weston. Let's let's give the applicant some time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, the applicant have anything to add to this? Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Do we have any questions from the commission? I'm assuming you're related to this yes. little shack. What's going so my on? name is Sam Markham. I'm lot 315 of the Hills of Santa Clara, phase three. I have a home finally under construction, <laughs> so we're glad of that. And uh, I am part of the Architectural Control Committee for phase three, which includes Liz Heintz there and Kendall Bateman. And one of the things is we're the CCRs have stipulations on the height of homes on different lots. 303 and 304 had a stipulation of 28 feet. 305 had a stipulation of 18 feet. So there's different stipulations on those lots. We have talked to, to um, Mr. Boyce and he has, he understands one, that before the building permit is applied for, we are required from our C CCRs to have the ACC approve the plan and make sure it meets all the requirements of the CCRs. And he has assured us that it will meet that 18 foot stipulation in lot 305. In fact, their expectation is that the height will be less than 18 feet on all the lots. So based on understanding that and representing the, the hills of Santa Clara phase three on, on the application we we concur with it we have no problems as the property owners with that as long as they understand the stipulation on the height chair i had a question on a we comment don't. i think you said 28 feet and then you just said 18 feet. well 303 and 304 are 28 feet okay 305 is 18 feet. Oh, okay so there's right. different heights there's different in the in, in the ccrs they speculate they specify different height limits on different lots yeah. and it's to avoid you know the views Trying to yeah. make sure you don't block the views of other homes. And yeah. this is just a walkout, isn't it? It's not, they're not going up. Right. A second well, well, it's a single level of the terrain. walkout. They're building down. Yeah, they're, it, so it's, it wouldn't be a walkout on the basement. Right. Yes, there's another floor, but there is yeah. a main level. So from the front of the home, it's one level. From the side, you're going to see two levels. From the back, there is that lower level, Three. which includes... If you looked at the plans, they're pretty cool—a bowling alley and a basketball court. So there are some yeah. there are some neat things in the basement of this home. Yeah. Hey, we so. hope they invite the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it will. The whole house should stay under that 18 feet. If it does creep up above 18, it will be where 303 and 304 are. But I think. Yeah. The elevation should be. For the record, we can't the uphold we, we ACC can't, committee can't rules I just anyway. Answer his question. Yeah. So, yeah. So that, but, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's. Other than that, I it did. It, it, I mean, in my layman's point, it didn't appear that it would be a problem. Yeah, it. I think it's going to be yeah. okay. Great. Right. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Logan, you think this is okay with that hillside? Yeah. You're the man. Looks yeah, like we have another they, gentleman. As long as they follow uh, the recommendation. Okay. I'm here representing one of the lot owners, lot 302. Uh, first of all, I'm Brent Anderson. Uh, I live on 1439 Canyonview Drive, but I'm here representing uh, the people, the owners of lot 302, which is just to the left of these three lots. And 
his major concern, he didn't know what was going on with what was going to be built. He just wanted to make sure there was no townhomes, <laughs> you know. And nobody was a hotel. Seven Eleven. It's always got a joke, don't you? Brett? <laughs> the only issue I have with this, Brett, and I'm going to hold your toe to the fire, is this single-family home is not sold to LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you're good with that, I'm good at that. I'm just kidding you. But anyway, no, uh, he's fine. I, as far as I'm aware with the single family home, I think it'll just entice the value of his property. Uh, now, just to your last remark on the 18 foot, you say you may switch that to the 303, possibly. <laughs> I, I, that might be a little bit of concern to the homeowner because obviously everybody's up there trying to get it. That sounds like Entrada, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, obviously everybody's after you. That's why they bought it. I think it's that. You know, it's hard to see a footprint how it's going to actually sit on the lot. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm out of this myself. I'm just here to represent. I didn't even want to be here because the applicant's a good friend, and so. Uh, anyway, okay. Single family homes good as long as we don't go condos. Okay. Okay. We're Thank you. All right. Well, thanks, Brent. Anybody else? No, I just was going to ask Logan. I mean, you're the expert. You've looked at all this. You got to think your question clarified. You feel yeah, good about we, the slope and the different things? Yeah, we were just, some of the concerns were because they're going so deep with that sub-basement, we wanted to see kind of how deep it was relative to the road, the neighboring lots, make sure that they, they have like shoring and that sort of thing for that. But those are, I think all that's contained in the recommendations. So mm -hmm. if we recommend that they follow the Hillside Review Board, should be good. Okay. Okay. Which is number five in the staff recommend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then, if we are done with that, uh, then in our general business, number two, we need a recommendation to the city council for this partial plat amendment. I'll make a motion that we recommend approval um, of the partial plat amendment um, to city council based on the five uh, recommendations by yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Did you get that recommendation? Yep. Okay. Do a second. Okay. I got a I'll second it. A recommendation from Shelly and a second from Mark. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Still in general business, number three. Uh, need to discuss the recommendation to the, for the final subdivision plat for Coyote Landing at Desert Edge. Thanks, Chair Weston. This is exciting. You're all familiar with the Desert's Edge project Robert Smith brought, brought to us in, in 2021 on the rezoning and the project plan and then this year we worked with him on the overall preliminary plat and entitlement for the whole site the whole 240 units on 20 acres this is the first phase this is phase one that includes 24 multifamily townhome units um the applicant again is robert smith we have tony carter who's on the line he's his at he's his engineer with horrocks uh, to answer any questions that the planning commission may have I got some history here about when we adopted the ordinance allowing for the PDR zone, 239 units. The Planning Commission may recall that on March of this year, we came back to get one additional unit, allowing Robert to go 240 units with a density of 11.99. Now that's pretty close to 12 units per acre. That's about as close as you can get. So it's at 11.99. Uh, you've probably seen some site work occurring here. They've been doing some grading on the corner of 400 and East and Northtown Road. And, you know, it would also be um, 
bounded by the future extension, uh, extension of Hamlin Parkway, which you see part of it with Arcadia, right, and, and the boat and RV parking area there. Um, what I want to do is bring the plan up itself. I'll bring up the phase one subdivision plat. I don't need to see the staff report, but let's go to the drawings themselves. Um, here's the cover sheet. And then here is page two of three. And then we have a page three of three of that subdivision plat. And so when we did the overall preliminary plat approval, it required things of phase one. And that's what we're making sure that's done here, kind of dotting I's and crossing T's that these things get put in with phase one. And so I want to just go through my list uh, briefly, because uh, we've heard a lot of this before. Uh, the public streets and dedication is required. So we're getting the dedication of Hamlin Parkway, the dedication of, and I'm going to open this up a little bit because this is a little smaller than my uh, eyes are allowing, but we've got the dedication here of Bobcat Drive Public Roadway, the dedication of Gila Monster, the dedication of Coyote Landing, and then Coyote uh, Cottontail Way coming up through here all the way to 400 East with some improvement there and then the dedication of Hamlin Parkway, which was required. So that's being put in place. Um, the design of the building and materials is quite nice. Um, as you know, we went through this pretty thoroughly previously. Nice design, it includes brick, uh, hardy board or fiber cementious, uh, cementious slab siding stucco, metal and trellis covered uh, balconies with a tile roof. The building setbacks, if we go back to the site plan here for phase one, and, and the phasing plan will do great. You see that phase one is this area kind of in the pink or rose color. It includes these 24 townhome units that back onto Hamlin. The boat and RV parking are required with phase one, and the main central amenity is required with phase one. That includes the clubhouse, uh, the water feature like Arcadia, the tennis, the pickleball, the parking lot. So it packs a punch. That's all coming here with phase one. But the building setbacks here will be a front setback because these are front-loaded townhomes, 20-foot front yard setback, um, the rear yard 10 feet adjacent to the wall that backs onto Hamlin, and then 12 feet between buildings minimum is what they've agreed to. So those would be the setbacks. We talked about the amenities, which we're getting here in the center of the project, and actually the boat and RV parking is amenity as well. Project landscaping and open space, you're all very familiar with our new ordinance. Uh, to 2022-05, water efficiency and landscape conservation, that's going to be required. Uh, the other thing is, is they are putting in a secondary water system as per the public works director for outdoor use. Project fencing with this phase is just that six foot wall that backs on to Hamblin Parkway. Uh, the project parking overall is over 700 spaces with this phase is 96 spaces uh, for the town uh, front loaded townhomes. So that's two on the driveway and two for each two car garage. So four per unit. The water availability, um, you know, they've got to get the approval or the, uh, the sign off from the Conservancy District, the will serve letter or other verified documentation. We were told last night by um, the mayor that the Conservancy District is anticipating release of these will serve water letters sometime in January. So we're looking to see one of those. So that's going to be happening soon. We talk about the secondary water, which I already mentioned, underwater availability, and then dust control. They have been doing grading, getting it prepped for some utilities, but each phase we want to make sure that we have appropriate dust control. We've got development all the way around this in this part of the city, and we we don't want to hear from the residents on a daily basis that there's blowing dust. We do have cycles where we do have blowing dust, but we need to control it. And by subphasing this into six phases, hopefully they can keep better control over that. Um, the different reviewing departments have reviewed uh, the plat and have some comments in your staff report, but everybody's good with the item moving forward. Uh, we did notice it uh, as per state code, and we've met that statute for a public meeting. So planning staff is recommending that the planning commission forward a positive recommendation to the city council for final plot approval for the Coyote Landing at Desert's Edge Phase 1 subdivision, subject to the conditions in the staff report, and we have 10. And basically, these are the conditions that uh, these conditions cover the items I previously discussed and went through quickly on the proposed mitigation or items to address. Uh, items one through nine, and then we have 10 conditions that will run with this particular plat uh, to make sure 
Um, we get what was required with the overall preliminary plat that we brought to you and, and the city council in March and April of earlier of this year. We're excited that the project's moving forward. Phase one does include townhomes, but you can see the next phase, phase two, which we're excited about, will include the first two buildings or first 60 units of the moderate income or affordable units, the apartment project, which they have Utah housing for. So we do know they have approval for those first 60 units. So we're hoping to see that come to you in 2023 uh, for that plat. Um, Tony Parker's here representing Robert Smith. Tony, is Robert with us tonight or are you, are you his voice? No, but I'm his voice tonight. I'd just like to thank the Planning Commission for allowing us to attend tonight. And, um, you know, we just look forward to working with the city. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Sorry. Okay. Well, this one's pretty easy because we've seen most of all this before. Um, after a meeting like this, so I have a question. When uh, When's the rumblings? What do you hear? on the Hamlin Parkway actually getting built that would relieve some of that pressure off of Pioneer. Yeah, that's a ways out. I mean, we get, we have, you know, the mayor's been pretty consistent and the public works director and others, mm -hmm. key city staff that we need the dedication. It needs to go in with this phase one and they're agreeing to do that, showing that on the plat. They're working, um, gosh, through with the MPO to get those funds. They're dedicating, but the city will later put those road improvements in. But I don't know the timeline, to be perfectly honest. I'll I'll find out. You know, when they say phase one, phase two, phase three with these projects, phase yeah. one is zero to five years, a two is five to ten, and a three or a vision can be 10 to 20 years out. I'm hoping this is sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, I'll try to find out so I can update you at the next planning commission. I just don't have that okay. date. So, all right, just wanted to know if yeah. you'd heard anything. Other than that, I see what I expected to see here. Can I ask a, I don't want to say dumb question, but a question about road names and the city's policy? Mm. Um, what other municipalities have a policy to not copy road names from other areas? Do you guys have similar? I am not familiar with our policy. Usually it goes through our city recorder. Cody, do you do you know better than I do? Uh, but I know that the county looks for duplicate names. Yeah. And so if there's something duplicated, it would be. I just I just know I just county. I'm familiar with Cottontail because I did a subdivision with that name. It wasn't Cottontail Way, it was Cottontail Drive. But there's several other Cottontail versions in the county. <laughs> Yeah, when I when I hired on here, um, Desert Village had a street named Tuacon Way or something, and that was that's since been changed. So I don't know if there's something similar or how close it is, but the when the county reviews it, they uh, they red flagged that one. So yeah, and we did get comments back from the county, and we did have to change some of the road names to make them work. But I mean, these are the current road names, and this is what we plan on using. So these are the ones that the county has approved of? Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. It's interesting. Um, working up north, if you work for any community in Salt Lake County, um, they go on the grid. And all of those street names have to be approved by the county um, a, a recorder or um, I'm trying to remember. But they have a street uh, naming division and multiple people. And if you record with a duplicate street name, you'll get letters from them on a monthly basis until you amend the plat to remove that street name. It's for 911 emergency services. They don't want any duplication countywide. Now, if you go to Utah County, uh, which is big too and growing, Lehigh area, Northern Utah County, um, Utah County just requires no duplication in a municipality. <laughs> so you could have duplication one city away. And so Logan brings up a good point. Well, uh, every, yeah, we have Canyon View Drive yeah. in Santa Clara and Canyon View Drive in yeah. St. George, and they're less than three miles apart. Yeah. But I look forward to getting the monthly letter when I did addressing for about five years in subdivision plats and paring it down. I got it down to less than 10 once, but then it can go right back up to 20. <laughs> but then some of your elected officials don't always agree. We're not doing that. We're not changing that one. You know, so it makes it, makes it a little hard. Mm. So. 
Okay. Anything else on this one? Then we're ready for a recommendation, I believe. I'll motion to recommend to the city council to consider the final plat subdivision for the Coyote Landing at Desert Edge Phase 1, subject to the nine items listed by the city staff and the 10 conditions recommended also by the city staff that we've just discussed. Excellent. Second. All right, I've got a first from Curtis and a second from Shelley. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, well, that takes us all the way down to number six, the discussion item for today, walkable commercial district. Thank you, Chair Weston. Um, I'll be real brief. Jeremy Call uh, has been talking to us or calling us, <laughs> sorry, um, talking to us recently about potentially creating a walkable commercial district. And we've had him come to a TRC in uh, November. Um, and he was going to come meet with us in November, but was ill. So we uh, delayed or continued this item until this evening. So with that, I'm going to turn uh, the next 20 minutes or so over to J Mr. Call and let him uh, lead this discussion with the Planning Commission. And Jeremy, you can let me know when you want me to turn it to the next slide. And then we can open it up to some Q&A afterwards as you feel needed or necessary. Thank Commission you. members. Good evening, everyone. I am Jeremy Call. I live on Rachel Drive, and I appreciate the opportunity to present this. Um, the purpose of the ordinance is simply to allow the type of commercial development that was envisioned by the city and the general plan to happen in the city. Um, it doesn't require it. It doesn't require developers to do this. It just allows them to choose to do it if they want to. And the, the concepts that are stated in the ordinance aren't arbitrary, they're not new, and they weren't driven by developers. They come directly from the general plan, and they've been proven in many cities around the nation to work, actually around the world to work. Um, the general plan designated the areas around Harmons and Dutchman's to be Main Street commercial and mixed use residential. And on page 42 of the general plan, it states the following. The Pioneer Parkway retail core objective is to ensure the flow of traffic in a major transportation corridor while providing significant retail and employment opportunities in a pedestrian oriented center. And then it says in the Pioneer Parkway retail core, the city encourages the creation of a quality pedestrian oriented center with a mix of commercial business and residential uses. And it states the actions to achieve this objective are the following, to work with local property owners to adopt design objectives for the Pioneer Parkway area that encourage buildings to abut the sidewalks adjacent to the street, continuous and transparent facades, wide, side, wide sidewalks, plazas, combined curb access, on-street parking, interconnected shared off-street parking, curb extensions, generous landscape, building articulation, and emphasized pedestrian crossings. So all of those action items we've included in this ordinance. Um, and um, it's important to note that all these concepts that are in the general plan, um, including the buildings adjacent to the street, wide sidewalks, tree-lined streets, on-street parking and generous landscaping, and the curb extensions all combined to create streets that and developments that are proven to be more environmentally friendly, reduce crime, reduce traffic, uh, traffic speeds, not traffic in itself, and increase comfort and happiness for pedestrians and shoppers. It also will increase tax revenue and the viability and longevity of the development, and it allows access for a greater number of people in the area. And on that same page of the general plan, there's a, an image that was created that shows the Pioneer Parkway, and it's not in that packet, but it shows uh, Pioneer Parkway and Rachel Drive intersection, and it shows uh, two-story buildings adjacent to the street with a tree-lined 
a street going both directions. Um, let's see. So one of the components of this ordinance is a reduction in required parking. Jeremy, did you want me to pull up the text that you submitted or um, are, you, are you going from there? Or are you going from somewhere else? Right, right there is perfect. Just that, those two site plans, that's where I'm going to go next. Right here? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, this one and then the next. Okay. Yeah. And I just want to just generally speak about it, um, not read the whole ordinance to you. But um, so one of the components is a reduction in parking. The current zone, zoning ordinance is a barrier to this type of development because of the parking requirements. Um, in order for this to really work, um, the facade, the building facades need to be adjacent to the street and they need to be continuous along the street. And there needs to be enough uh, building area to allow pedestrians to easily access the uh, number of shops. Um, and that putting the buildings continuous along the streets creates an enclosure for, for pedestrians and it makes it more comfortable and safe and easy for them to access buildings and it also slows down traffic. Um, and by reducing the parking, it'll allow for that to happen. It'll allow more floor space in a smaller area. It'll generate more sales and more tax revenue. And it also creates an incentive for the developers to choose to do that rather than being forced to do that. Um, now, if you look at that site plan that's on Zoom right now, that's an original site plan for the property that's across or just west of Harmons um, and south of Mountain America. And, and, uh, Sorry, yeah, yes. north of Mountain North of Mountain America. America. Sorry, north and, of Mountain America. And south, south of, the, of the fire station. South of the fire station. Yes, so it's thank about you. about two and a half acres or whatever it is. Yes, thank you for correcting me. So if you if you look at that, that's that's what we can do right now with the zoning ordinance. And that has, they have two drive-throughs. And if you notice, the drive-through lanes are parallel to Rachel Drive, which creates this nice little walkway for pedestrians to walk through with cars on both sides of them. It's not a very attractive or friendly or safe place for pedestrians to walk, which is a main goal of the general plan in this area is to create a safe and comfortable place for pedestrians to shop. Um, you know, also notice that the buildings had to be pushed back to allow for that um, drive through lane and there's a huge distance between the buildings, which also creates discomfort for, for pedestrians. And it doesn't make it easy for them to access the stores either. Um, but if you look at the next slide there, this is an alternative site plan for that same area. And if we could just slightly modify the zoning ordinance, we could do something like this where uh, there is no drive-through lane between the sidewalk and the buildings that actually allows pedestrians to access the building from the sidewalks, create some dining space outside, creates uh, an enclosure for pedestrians and allows tree, we'd have trees planted on the street, which create a barrier between the cars and the pedestrians. And if the city would allow it, it would be nice to have on-street parking there, which also creates another barrier between the pedestrians and the vehicles that are moving to create a safer place. Um, so our hope is that you'll consider this ordinance and allow something that's more appealing, more attractive and safer for everybody in this area. And if you have any questions or concerns, welcome to ask them now or you can send them to Jim or email me or whatever works for you. Are, you. are you proposing this for like the whole town and any commercial area or is it mainly just for that Harmon so, district? So the, if, if you look, the general plan proposes this type of development around Dutchman's and this, and this area. This yeah. area. 
what about the historic commercial downtown? The historic needs really a, its own ordinance that would be separate because it's a special place and people downtown have a different attitude towards what they want. I think it should be a separate thing. But the, the ordinance is written really so that the developer can choose to do it. It's not something they're required to do. You can make it that way if you wanted to, but right now it's written as a choice for people around Dutchman's and around Harmon's mm. to do this. Well, it's something that you're laying out there and there has to be a lot of discussion on whether or not, because this would be a policy decision, you know, for, for the city to decide to allow something like this. Um, in my opinion, and I've talked to the mayor and, and the city manager and some others briefly, there's nothing been, not, not a lot of detail at this point, but it appears to be more of an overlay type of zone. You know, we have the PDC zone, which is our planned development commercial, the Harmon Center and the Four Corners there. There is flexibility in that PDC zone based on some of the development patterns that you see there. This property uh, by the credit union, you know, the property he's describing that the site plan has been laid out for okay. is in our standard commercial zone. You know, it's just the commercial zone. It's not the PDC and Dutchman's. Um, you know, the property adjacent to Dutchman's owned by the LDS Church is currently R110. And in that area, uh, Dutchman's is commercial. As you know, Nick Fry came in and rezoned to commercial so he could do his manufacturing on that site, which we've seen plans in the last couple of weeks. So he is proceeding on that. <clears throat> but the other property is likely to go commercial there, the, ten, the 15 acres owned by the LDS Church. We just recently, in the last couple of weeks, uh, we were contacted about doing a survey or a plat dividing the property in half. Uh, we've been asking for that for quite some time. As you know, uh, they, they did some surveys three or four years ago, and now they're looking to maybe subdivide, um, you know, into two lots, allowing for one lot to go for a church or a stake center church and the remaining 10 acres or so to go commercial. I'm not sure if that will be a stake center, but they want five acres um, at this point in time is what they're asking for. So the remainder is approximately 10. And something, you know, something like this has some potential there, but, you know, we just have to think about this outside the box a little bit more and discuss if we were to allow something like this, is it an overlay? You know, is it some type of overlay where someone chooses to rezone to that zone. So maybe it's a walkable commercial overlay. The zone's created at some point in time. The applicant, um, I'm forgetting your name, Mr. Sorry. Skyler. Skyler. See, I was gonna say Lawrence. And so I'm glad you told me, I remembered your last name. Yes, Skyler Lawrence. Um, you know, if a zone's put on the books, um, if something were to be done, then potentially the property could be zoned to that zone, allowing for that walkable overlay type of district that allows for some flexibility. But some of these big picture items, you know, the parking, we need to have some science behind that on the parking reduction. Uh, you know, what really works, what's been tested, tried, true in other markets to, to reduce the parking. I like the idea if if it's feasible. I do know that a lot of the uh, commercial tenants want their ten per thousand when it's a fast food restaurant. You know, some of the some some of those businesses, uh, you know, the companies they they want a certain standard. There's others that don't rely so heavily on that standard. Um, we've had some discussions about parking on Rachel, and that's a concern. You know, that's a concern with many here at the city. Uh, they're concerned about allowing parking on Rachel. Maybe it's the tree line like you're showing with buildings closer, allowing for some outdoor dining experience, a little bit better site plan layout with flexibility with the setbacks and the building design. Uh, you know, parking's gonna have to be looked at and we're gonna have to have some science behind that. I know that APA has some varied parking standards, but the, you know, engineering handbook, they have parking standards. We kind of have to look at some of that for mixed use to see what's maybe been allowed, what's feasible, what works. I just don't know. And I know, Jeremy, you're, 
you know, you're writing it and making suggestions, which I think is great. I mean, there's some good ideas in there, but we, there has to be some um, science behind it as well. Some specifics, you know, on those standards on how we would do it. So, yeah. Jeremy, what's your thoughts? I know we set up that whole pioneer Rachel area in the walkability idea. As I've spent time up there, you just don't see people walking those sidewalks. Most everybody is driving. Do you think this, having something like this may change it, may bring people to walk, having something? Because we just don't see a lot of people walking through those areas. Why don't you? And that, that's the question. Do you think something like this may encourage? Well, you have to you have to have a walkable space in order for people to walk there. If it's not a walkable space, they're not going to be there. So, so if you have building facades that don't have a window in them, there's no reason for people to walk down the street. So, so we have, you have to create it first in order for it to be. Well, I think you need three things, truly. And, and let me know, let be straight. I'm on your side on this. I think that America's dependence on the car is kind of disgusting. And as a guy that moves by human power a lot, probably more than anybody you know, I'm all for more of this. However, you really need three things. You needed the space to do it. You need a tenant that is a, a something that people want to walk to or walk in front of. And number three, you have to change American culture. We love our cars. We just love it so much that even you, which is kind of ironic, drawing this walkable thing, have two of your three buildings with a drive up, <laughs> right? Because I think we all found that during COVID, everybody loves to eat in their car for some reason. And there cannot be enough gullible people to go to all the swigs in the world, apparently. <laughs> and so you need three things. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think you've got one. We've got desire and we can do, we've got a space to do it. But do you have tenants that'll fill it? And you have the ability to, to find enough people and talk to enough people to get out of their car. And I think that's the biggest one is American culture has to change before this becomes really popular. Well, I, I, I mean, we can see all I'm over still on America. your side. <laughs> we're, we're in America and all over America, this, this happens, this works yeah. all over America. I mean, I realize that we're different or St. George, but, but it still happens. It's not just American culture. It's, hey, hey, do you feel like happens in big cities? So, so mixed here's, use here's work too, like mixed use where you have residents that live upstairs and work here and dine here and walk around here. This used here. to be great. This, this project probably won't include it, but right. other projects want to include it in this neighborhood. So yeah, the PDC would allow for vertical mixed use. It's just that our market, and I'd love to see some vertical mixed use. You see it up North, you see it in downtown settings. But when you get out in suburbs and bedroom communities, it's horizontal. You know, the uses are separated. Like we saw one with Silverado, yeah. right? They want a sports bar and grill, a pickleball facility, strip retail, man caves, dwelling units, homes, whatever we want to call them. There's that concept now. And then apartments. So you have the mix of uses, but they're spread out horizontally. A true vertical mixed use could be done through the PDC zone uh, that we currently have on the books. Um, but, you know, that's your ground floor retail and office and, and uh, apartments above type of scenario. And I know Jeremy probably has experience with that. So. Hey, can I make a comment about this? James, is that you? Is that James? Yeah. Is that, can I make a comment about this? You may. Of course. Thank you, Mark. I, I live pretty close to this area, and we're actually going to build a new home, hopefully really soon, uh, that's actually about 12 feet closer than our current residence to all of this. And one of the reasons we wanted to stay here is because of this walkability. I see people over there from uh, walking, sometimes when I walk to Harmons, I ride my bike to Harmons. I see people coming over from um, Paradise Village at Zion. And I think when those townhouses are built out behind Harmons uh, across the street from Lava Ridge, I think you're going to see a lot more foot traffic over here. Um, we've walked with friends to eat at um, 
Cafe Rio and over at that new that little Thai place. And I I think a lot often I think it may have been Mark Hendrickson who said once that a lot of times when we go on vacation, we like to go walk to places when we're on vacation. You think about downtown St. George. That's not very urban in my mind. It is a lot more than it was 30 years ago, I guess, but there's a lot of walkability down there. I think that if we if we're forward looking, I, I think that it's important for us to have these walkable spaces. Um, I think it'll be a bigger issue in the future and maybe not so much, you know, right this minute, but I think moving forward, it'll be a bigger deal. That's, that's my comment. Um, well, I think one major thing I'm trying to point out here is that this is what the general plan wants to do here. It's not what I want to do here. It's what the general plan wants to do here. And there's science behind the general plan. So the science is there and, and we can talk to the guy who wrote the general plan and he could give us no, we, that document. If you'll recall, there was this, this body right here tried to uphold that general plan really, really hard on that corner. And it went they went over our head to planning commission and they folded it up like an old church chair and moved that building back. But we tried really hard. And so, yeah, uh, I think, I think none of us have a problem with this, right? We no, would love I, to I don't have a problem with it. I just, it's, I'm worried that we probably are too late. And that's what concerns me. There you go. Well, I, good way to say it. We, we can say it that way, but we're not too late because there's still potential. If the, the more, People that walk there, the more the other property owners are going to see that, yep. and things will change. And and there, the bones are there, so so they kind of that, a, if you build it, they will come. Yes, that and and the bones are there. There's one building that's not on the street, but the rest of them are pretty close to the street, and and that it, it can develop over time. And and we still have the area around Dutchman's that ten acres we were just talking about, which is yeah. huge potential to do something really nice. Yeah. And and right now they can't do it. The ordinance doesn't allow it. And it allows some things, but it doesn't give them the opportunity to actually do it. See, my thought behind the walkability was four months out of the year at nine o'clock at night, it's still north of a hundred degrees. So you weren't getting a lot of people out walking. And then two months out of the year, it's too cold. So you really only have half a year to walk it. So my whole life, I, I love the idea of walk because me and my wife are walkers, but I just, I wonder if that's why we're not getting a lot of walkability other than your point on windows. Is it too hot here to do the walkability thing? Um, and Nope. So Mark can attest to this. I can attest to it. And James can attest to this. I ride my bike to Harmon's almost every time I go there. It doesn't matter if it was three days ago or if it's in the middle of summer when it's 110 degrees, mm -hmm. I ride my bike. And there's a lot of other people that will do it too, but it's just, it, the culture can change mm -hmm. and I'm, yeah, people, people will do it. Give them, give them the opportunity and they'll do it. We just don't have, we're not giving them the opportunity to do it. Well, let's do it. Go draw this up and submit it. Let's go. Okay. Do you, do you be willing to? <laughs> well, the ordinance. I've already drawn up the ordinance, and it just needs to be oh. reviewed. It's it's yeah. in your packet. It just but, needs to be reviewed by the city and by you. And, and we don't need an ordinance if he if he showed up with this drawing, just like it is. Yeah. That one right there. Well, and I think Jeremy understands this has to go through a process. Yeah. We don't just take an ordinance and adopt it. Right. This is setting policy citywide. The elected officials have to approve of an ordinance amendment to allow such a thing to go through. We're coming to the planning commission tonight to get your feel for it. Mm -hmm. At a later date, it will go to council. I don't have that date at this point, but for a discussion with them for their consideration, but we can take some of the bones of this, but we don't just take what's given to us and adopt it. We have to look at what works for the city working through groups and committees. Um, with an ordinance. I've never just taken an ordinance from somebody and, and stamped it and put it in a code. You know, we have to look at it and see how it works for us and really what you and the elected officials want and what you agree with and, and what you are comfortable with. You know, there's some good things in it, but there's some things I have questions about. But as you know, we're dealing with a lot of things right now. You've seen some of the big projects that were on the agenda tonight. Um, 
you know, I'm a one man crew, so I haven't had a chance to rewrite, but I need more direction from you, you folks, as well as our elected officials before I move forward on this. I've not been tasked to do that at this point. So I, I would like to see our community move towards more of this because right now St. George is going backwards. They're, they're doing all kinds of weird things over there that are completely like getting away from traditional type developments. They're even like implementing upper floor setbacks. Like if you come up two stories, then you got to set back from the street, which is totally counterintuitive to any sort of downtown feel. And they're increasing their parking standards and doing all kinds of things. This is just recently happening. And um, so I would like to see our community go more this direction. I, I really don't like the drive-throughs on that. I feel that's more pedestrian conflicts than we probably would want in a walkable neighborhood. These two right here, is that yeah. what saying? Look, because this goes back to the credit union, and then this is in the middle. I don't know. Okay. Just enticing yeah. people to drive there doesn't sound like walkable necessarily, but but the tenants require that. The tenants yeah. probably yeah. do. Oh wait, wait. I mean, I was, you've got a landowner that needs to be able to develop the property to make an income. That's a yeah. pretty good compromise there. When you, if you look at that one compared to the one that was done previously, previously yeah. it's a really good. But compromise the, to allow on, both. And drive throughs have been a challenge. We've had, you and I've even had personal conversations about drive throughs. So it's, it, it is a challenge. I, I think, I think back to um, the comment about the mentality of the United States or whatever. We do have the mentality we want to drive places, but we're also kind of required to by just the way it's yeah. designed. Yeah, the city's made out. Yeah. I was watching a video at Urbanist Field today about the town center or South, what's it called? It's in Vegas. It's called Town Center. It's kind of by the airport. Mm -hmm. Big. I'm saying. They call it a, anyways, it's this huge sea of asphalt around a walkable center. People are driving forever to come to a place they can walk around. <laughs> right? It's yeah, kind it's of weird that way. So they, people do want it. They'll drive forever. You'll drive hours and hang out with 80, 85,000 people to walk around Disneyland. You know, it's the same kind of thing if it's up the street. I think you'll go to it. Um, the weather stuff, like tons of people live in New York and Chicago where the weather's horrible and they're out there walking around all year long. So um there's yeah. no bad weather, just the wrong gear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. You're either walking or Ubering or taxi. You can't yeah. get anywhere. Right. So that is right. So basically, in my mind, one of the concerns I had is okay, we're gonna make this change for what? We've got this piece of land and a couple other parcels. That type of thing. That was my first reaction, gut reaction. When I read through it, I went, okay, we basically do. But at the same time, I hear what you're saying. If we don't give it the opportunity, where have we failed? So I think that's that's where my opinion changed as I read through this and that type of thing. I think it's something we need to look at, and especially where we're talking about the potential for 10 acres in the center of our town. Yeah. That skewed my opinion quickly. Um, my first reaction, gut reaction, I mean, I I was opposed to that whole corner and walkability. And I don't, I'm not a walker. I'm not, I'm not a biker anymore. I'm not all those things. But I think if we, it's kind of that bill that we will come. So my opinion of this is we probably need to look at it. I don't know how the timing is to look at it. But I also believe that if you were to bring that to this committee, this commission rather right now, we would look at getting it approved. So I, I do want to make a point on that. What you both said is that we could bring this the way it is, and all you would have to do is approve a little bit less parking. This this doesn't have this the reductions that we propose in the ordinance, but it does have a little parking reduction to allow that to happen. And you have the opportunity to approve that. Again, so. we're not at that point yet. Right. It has to go to city council right. for a work meeting first, and we need their direction. If they say we can do that, then we can do that. But we bring, we've talked about these, we bring them to you and have a discussion, then we go to the council. And then from there, we can decide what the direction will be. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate All right. That. Thanks, Jeremy. Yep. All right. Back to the agenda. Where are we at? <laughs> takes us all the way down to number six. Can I ask a question, Jeremy, though? Yeah. And, and Skyler, I mean, is, is it your intent to build this development at some point? You own the land. Really soon, actually. Yeah. So 
Right. Yeah. But you hear what we're saying. So, okay. I just, I love to see the positive nature of it. So that's what my question is. How soon are you looking and that type of thing? Yeah. I mean, some of that will be driven by demand. You know, right. When I go in, it probably be going up when nobody's going. Right. Released. Yeah. And as we get more certainty that this is a possibility that it can happen, it makes it easier for us to present this to potential tenants. Well, Sorry. my opinion would be if you brought this right now, no question. Thank you very much. Is the is the planning commission good then with this proceeding to council for a discussion? I think it needs to go. Okay, <laughs> as per, yeah. And I think you're fine with that. Um, I will have to talk to city management um, Monday to see when that date will be, Jeremy. I don't have it yet, but I'll get with you next week. So Thank okay. you, thanks. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, then. Now we can move to number seven on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes from November 10th, 2022. Yeah. Two things. One, uh, excuse Mark Weston was here. I didn't even look at that. That's why I got you. And I would like the second thing, Selena, is I would like you to list deputy city recorder, not executive assistant. Um, the lady who does our minutes. I don't know. Okay. But that's my, I think that needs to be recognized. Deputy city recorder, not uh -huh. executive assistant. I just barely put that on my email. Especially if that comes job title comes with a raise. <laughs> just hopefully, saying. Hopefully it did. Okay, <laughs> maybe not. But those are the two things I read everything and you probably heard that. Everything was good to me. Just Mark well, Mark was here. He was the speaker that night. <laughs> because if Curtis was excused and Mark was excused, that meant I was the speaker and that didn't happen. It didn't happen. <clears throat> yeah. Everybody okay. good with that? I think so. And we can. Yeah. So would somebody like to put forth the approval of those minutes? I move that we approve the minutes with the modifications that I just so noted, Selena Nez as deputy city recorder and change the excuse of Mark Weston. I'll second it. Great. I've got a first from Mark to approve the minutes and a second from Ryan. All in favor. Aye. 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 And with that, I had one quick item. Okay. I always do. I'm sorry. And then maybe I need to put it on here, but I just want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. It's coming up soon. Um, I like to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I'll also say Happy Holidays. But um, thank you for what you do. Thank you for a great year. I've enjoyed working with you. Um, and our next meeting will be on January 12th, 2023. And so we have a little bit of a break. Depending on, I'm be, I'll be in transit that day. Okay. And barring any flight complications, I may not make it back. Okay. I'm coming from Montana, so. Okay, and we and we do have items things we're working on um, that will be available for that 12th agenda. If I'm so. in transit and can get Zoom, I will. If I'm in an airplane. Okay. Okay. Thank you for being here, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and with that, we will close this meeting until. January 12th, 2023. Thanks, James. I see you there. <laughs>